when I saw that there was going to be a crock pot collaboration for this day in October, hosted by Managing the Maze and Southern Wife Everyday Life, I knew I had to dig out a brisket because I tried a new recipe recently and the old way of doing brisket is out the window. No more smoking it. No more days of processing it and doing all sorts of stuff with it. In the crock pot it goes and I'm going to show you where what I found. I'll attach the recipe down below. It's a simple process. Now that the meat has thawed, or at least partially thawed, I'm going to go ahead and put together the dry rub. So let's get rather ingredients and get this baby going. Okay, step one is to put together a dry rub. A tablespoon of chili powder. A tablespoon of paprika. It calls for a tablespoon of garlic salt, but I'm just going to use garlic pepper. And I'm just going to round it off a little bit, and you'll see why in just a minute. We need a teaspoon of dry mustard. It called for a teaspoon of garlic powder, but I already used a tablespoon of that, so we're going to use a teaspoon rounded of salt. Get a teaspoon of pepper. tablespoon of sugar and that's all we need. I'm just going to take my measuring spoon here and blend this all together. No need to dirty up another one. Well, that was easy. Open up our brisket. This brisket was grown locally by a farmer friend. Oh, I'm going to kind of stretch her out here. It's still a little bit frozen. I'm going to go ahead and pat this dry. Fit in this Tupperware container I've got here really well. And then I'm going to sprinkle on about half of the rub. And just rub it in really good. We'll flip it over again. Sprinkle on the rest, rub it in, put on my lid, and now this is going to go into the refrigerator all night. It is the next day. I have my crock pot out and ready. Got my brisket here. You're supposed to have about one and a half cups of broth. Um, I cooked some beef the other day and this is the drippings that I have left from it so I'm going to use this and it says to put this in first but I'm going to do things a little bit different I like to take an onion and cut it up I usually quarter it Let's make sure there's no bad spots and I'm going to put this in the bottom of my crock pot And I do this to kind of lift my roast up a bit so that it's not sitting in that juice. It will make its own drippings and it's going to be great because we're going to make gravy out of it. But for now, we'll go ahead and we'll put in these beautiful drippings. And I'm going to set that roast. I'm going to have the fat cap up so that all that fat and those juices kind of go down in. I'm going to pour any of this on and rub it in. Sit on that lid. Turn her on and we're going to have eight. It says eight to ten. We're going to do eight. I got started a little, little late today and we're going to put that on low for eight hours. We're just a few hours out from like maybe three hours out from supper time. So I grabbed my second crock pot and I'm gonna make us a nice side to go with this roast. I wanna make some cheesy crock pot potatoes. 
you need 32 ounces of diced potatoes. I'm actually going to be using, this is Potatoes O'Brien. It's a 28 ounce bag. I'm gonna use a bag and a half of these because I'm gonna omit the onion part of this recipe, which I will be posting down below because there are potatoes, onions, and peppers in this mix. So to compensate, you'll, you'll wanna use, I don't know, somewhere around 40 ounces or something. Just use your judgment. It doesn't have to be an exact science. The next thing I want to add in is some sour cream. I need a full cup of that. And if you don't have a cup of sour cream, you can actually use cream cheese instead. And that would make this also very delicious. So we'll add that cup of... We're gonna have some cream of, you could choose chicken, mushroom, celery, it really doesn't matter. Just a 10.5 ounce can of cream of your choice soup. I like to kind of just mix my sour cream and my cream of mushroom soup together just a little bit to give it a start. Then we're gonna start adding some seasonings in. Two teaspoons of salt a half to one teaspoon of pepper. I'm gonna go ahead and probably use a whole teaspoon. My family likes pepper. And a teaspoon of garlic powder. We love garlic and onion here at our house. And parsley, that's another one we love. One cup of, they call for cheddar cheese, but today I'm going to use a Colby Jack. We just really enjoy Colby Jack cheese. We like that blend. It doesn't matter. Just choose your cheese of choice. You'll need two cups, one now and then one we're going to need later. We're just going to give this a quick mix here. Oh, it's this simple, folks. Now, the directions don't say to do this, but I know potatoes and cheese stick. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of spray my crock pot. Just dumping this right in. I'm gonna kind of try to make this an even layer the best I can. And now I'm gonna go ahead and put this on high the lowest I have showing here is four hours, but we only need to cook it for about three. We're gonna come back in about two and a half hours to finish this off. Well, I thought, why not make the entire meal out of crock pots? But I thought we should do a dessert tonight. I'm gonna do my spin on a dump cake. So instead of using pie filling, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get just a can of fruit. I'm getting the extra cherry, and I dump the entire can in there to give it a little extra sweetness. I have some of my homemade apple syrup. Add a little bit of cornstarch, maybe about a tablespoon. And this is what's gonna help thicken this up for us. So I'm just gonna kinda stir this together. This is our base. And you just don't want any clumps. Oh, that fruit smells lovely. You don't want any clumps in there. If you wanna do the actual dump cake version, just get one jar or one can of pie filling of your choice. And then next, instead of cake mix, I'm going to use, I have this package of fried jack pie mix, which is kind of like a pie dough mix. And I'm gonna add it in here because I don't have a cake mix and I don't want to do a half a cake mix. Because when you use a crock pot this size, basically all you have to do is have any of your typical recipes. Give it a little depth of flavor, I'm going to Sprinkle on some brown sugar. No real measurements here, just kinda put some on top. 
And then I'm gonna take about a half a stick of butter. I'm just gonna put pats of butter all over the top of this, just like that. And now all you have to do is close the lid and turn it on high, and it's gonna be ready in about two and a half hours. So by the time we're ready for dessert, dessert will be ready for us. Because this isn't actually a cake mix, decided we need leavening, and I'm gonna mix in a little baking powder in here. So our time is up on our first crock pot. So what I need to do is go ahead, grab this remainder cheese. We're gonna open up the second crock pot and just sprinkle it right on top. Ooh, that's already looking lovely. Put that lid back on. It's gonna be about another 30 minutes. I have brought over our dessert crock pot. Looks like the butter is starting to pool, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, tilt that lid just a little bit. And now, Let's see how this roast turned out. Ooh. It smells fantastic. And I'm gonna let that sit and rest a bit before we cut it. Look at that. Oh, beautiful. It's got that nice coating on there. I'm going to go ahead and pull these onions out. My family does like to eat the onions after they've been cooked in the broth. So this is just a little extra treat to serve on the side. Next thing I want to do is strain off the broth into a pot, strained out of this. Basically what I've done here is I've just strained off all the stuff I wouldn't want in my gravy. So look how deep and dark that is. Oh, guys, fantastic trick my mom taught me is to throw some ice on here and then we can skim off the fat. So I'm going to dump in some ice cubes and you can see it's already starting to accumulate the fat to the top. Look how fast that works. And you can do this a couple times if you wish. But now I can pull that fat off. And to make the gravy, all I need to do is bring this up to a boil. And then I'm going to take a cornstarch slurry of water and cornstarch and add to it to thicken it. And this will be some pretty amazing gravy. So I've added some pepper. And I'm going to go ahead and add some salt to this. Our meat has rested maybe 10 minutes. I'm gonna start slicing it. I'm gonna start taking this in slices and putting it back in my crock pot to kind of just the crock pot itself, even though it's shut off, is still warm. The brisket all sliced. And laying there in the crock pot, here is our beautiful gravy. I'm just gonna take this gravy and we're gonna just pour it over the brisket. Not all of it, obviously, I made the entire pot. This would have been perfect for mashed potatoes. So I'm gonna save that gravy and we'll have that later this week. But I want this brisket, this meat, is gonna be so 
delicious with that on there. So we'll just place that lid back on there. And we only have about 15 minutes left on our potatoes and then supper will be ready. Okay, so in the background, I've got a little noise going on. I've got the KitchenAid going with some cream I'm whipping up, but oh, they're a little more water than I hope, hoped for, but I'm gonna go ahead, I think if I mix these up, ooh. There we go. So I kind of messed with it a little bit, but I had to taste it. It's really good. And I've got some whipped topping. Let's put this meal together. Here it is, a meal from Crock-Pots. Isn't that a lovely plate? And look at the dessert. These are some leftover green beans that I had pan fried Asian style. Quick taste test of everything here. We'll try crock pot one first, which was the meat. And let's see if it's as good as it was when I made it the first time. Mm. Very, very tender. But I just remembered I forgot the bay leaves and I can I am missing that flavor. So follow the directions down below. You'll want to have that in there. Let's try the potatoes. Mm. And that's one I definitely want to do again. And I can't wait for dessert. I was a little worried about it being a little um, too wet and it's actually a bit dry. So I've got a little fruit in there. I've got a little crust. I'm gonna put some fresh cream that was whipped. Mmm, mm-hmm. Wow. Guys, I'm loving my crock pot and I hope you love yours too. I hope that these recipes inspired you to get your crock pots out and get to experimenting in the kitchen. I'm so excited that I got to join in on this collaboration and appreciate each and every one of you being here. If you've not been here before, I would encourage you to go ahead and subscribe and go ahead and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on the next video. If you, get, if you enjoyed watching this, give it a like and share it out. That really helps my channel grow. Bye for now, friends. See you next time.